Let's now discuss the double slit experiment. And as we said before, our aim is to understand how the microscopic world actually behaves. Okay, for example, how the electrons actually behave. First, we'll do, we'll carry out the double slit experiment using a machine gun. Means these bullets are classical objects, like balls. These are like steel balls. So first, we'll discuss how the double slit experiment behaves using uh, classical objects, and then we'll try to understand how the electrons behave in such an experimental setup. Okay, then we'll, by comparing, we'll get some idea as to how different the microscopic world actually is. Let's get on to this experiment. The experimental arrangement is quite simple. Here we have got a double slit uh, in this thought experiment. All right, you consider it as a thought experiment so that we can consider it as an ideal thought experiment. So we don't have to worry about the experimental details. And uh, the experimental arrangement, as I said, is quite simple in this thought experiment. We have got a double slit arrangement here, which means that there are two slits. And behind the double slit arrangement, we have got a screen. When we do it with a machine gun, in, instead of a screen, we use a wall. So the bullets from the machine gun uh, pass through these slits. Okay, you are just shooting at this, uh, at this double slit arrangement. And the bullets pass through the slits. And the bullets that pass through the first slit, this we can call as slit 1, and this is slit 2. The bullets that pass through slit 1 will fall directly behind slit 1 on the wall, and it will form a pattern like this. Okay, as you see, these are holes made of the marks on the wall made by the bullets hitting the wall. And there are bullets that pass through slit 2, and they will form a pattern right behind slit 2. So this is what we expect using classical objects. And if you carry out this experiment, this is what you will actually get. Okay, you'll get a pattern like this. Now, it's difficult to keep drawing pictures like this. So let's look at a more convenient way to represent this. So this is the representation of this uh, picture. So we can include more information in it. So here's source. In this case, the source is the machine gun. In this example, in this the source, in this case, the source is the machine gun. Okay. Here I've got the double slit arrangement. This is, you can call this a slit one and this a slit two. And the bullets that, that pass through slit one fall somewhere on the screen or the wall. Okay, the bullets that pass through slit two fall somewhere here. And depending on the distance between the slits, some of the uh, bullets may fall somewhere in between also. Okay, there could be an overlap region where where bullets from both slit 1 and slit 2 can reach. Okay, This region is the overlap region. And what do we mean by this uh, curve here? What do we mean by this plot here is that at each point on the screen, okay, you can consider this as the x-axis. You can consider this as the x-axis. And uh, this would be the x-coordinate. And at each value of x, what are the number of bullets that have reached the screen? Okay, This number you can plot here. So at this point, this is the point for the map. This is the point where the maximum number of bullets have reached. It's actually a region where the maximum number of bullets have reached. For example, if you take this as the coordinate x1, okay, you have got an entire region here. You've got an entire region here. And that would give you the number of, the, the, the height of the curve would give you the number of bullets that have hit that particular x coordinate. Okay. All right. So this, this is the region where the minimum number of bullets have reached. Okay. This is the region where the maximum number of bullets have reached. And in this region, there is some overlap in the sense that uh, some bullets that pass through slit 1 and some bullets that pass through slit 2, okay, they, uh, all this reach in this region. Okay. This is an overlap region, which means that bullets from both slit 1 and slit 2 can reach at this point. Okay. I hope this plot is quite clear. You could also think of it as a probability plot. Okay, if, if you want a probability plot, if you want a probability plot, what you do is that instead of plotting the number of bullets at each point, okay, what you do is that you plot the number of bullets that reach each point divided by the total number of bullets that have been, uh, the total number of bullets that's used in the experiment. Okay, this would give you the measured probability. So if you are plotting instead of n, all right, n is the number of bullets that reached at this point. Let's say that n is the number of bullets. Small n is the number of bullets that have reached this point. 
and capital N is the number of bullets that have been used in the experiment. All right. So instead of plotting small n at each point, you could plot small n divided by n. Okay. So you are scaling it by a factor of capital N, and this would be the measured probability. This would be the measured probability that would give you the fraction of bullets that have reached any particular point. So if you do it like this, what you have is a probability plot, and this plot will tell us the probability that a bullet reaches a particular point or a particular region on the screen. All right. Okay, now this is quite simple. There's nothing unexpected here. So I just wanted to introduce the double slit uh, arrangement and how classical objects behave in this uh, system. Okay. Now we need to understand the behavior of uh, quantum world, the microscopic world. So as, an, as a representative of the microscopic world, we'll choose electrons. So throughout our discussion, we'll choose electrons as the representative of the microscopic world. Now, we carry out the experiment with electrons to understand how the electrons actually behave in such an experimental setup. All right. Now, we don't have to, we don't need to have any uh, prejudice about electrons. Let's imagine that we don't know anything about electrons. So, we start with the idea that we know absolutely nothing about electrons. We want to understand what these electrons are and how they behave. And how do we understand this? We look at experiments. We look at experimental data. So, we here we are trying to look at how the electrons behave in this particular experimental arrangement. That's all. So we are starting from the very beginning. Okay? Because as we said earlier, quantum mechanics is a mathematical framework that was developed in order to explain the experimental data. Experiment, experiments such as the double slit experiment. Okay. All right. So historically, double slit experiment was not actually done until much later. It was not done before the advent of quantum mechanics. It, it, these were many other experiments, but this is this we use as a representative experiment. Okay. Now, since we don't know anything about electrons, let's start with a different arrangement first. What we do is that first we'll keep slit one open, okay, and then slit two closed, and then send the electrons. Right. So in the first case, we'll keep slit one open. Okay, we'll keep slit 1 open and then we'll keep slit 2 closed. All right. And then what we expect is, in this case, the slit 2 is closed. And then, of course, we'll expect some uh, distribution of elect electrons behind slit 1. Okay. Now what we do is that we'll close slit 2, we keep slit 2 closed. Sorry, we we keep slit 1 closed. This is slit 1 and this is slit 2. You keep slit 1 closed and open slit 2. And then you will get some uh, electrons falling behind slit 2. This is fine. And uh, you continue this experiment. All right? You continue this experiment for a long time in the sense that you first keep slit 1 open, slit 2 close, closed, and then keep sending electrons for a long time. Okay? You, you send a large number of electrons, and then that's when you get a pattern behind slit 1. And then you send electrons to slit 2 alone, keeping slit 1 closed. And then you'll get a pattern like this, all right? Now, if you, uh, in the end, if you draw the plot, you'll get a pattern like this, okay? So this is the number, this will give you the number of electrons that has reached a particular region of the uh, screen. You could also think of the prob think of it as the probability that the electron reaches a particular region, okay? All right. Now, the pattern obtained after both phases completed is given in picture. Right? This is the pattern that we get after both phases are complete. What are both phases? One phase is where you keep slit 1 open and slit 2 closed. And then you keep slit 1 closed and slit 2 open. And in the end, this is the pattern that you get. Okay. Now, this, uh, all right, I am, uh, so I'll, I'll be a little bit sloppy here. This, the, the exact pattern won't look exactly like this, all right? but uh, there could be some first order effects which we'll neglect for the moment. All right? So you'll come to appreci appreciate these things later on. Okay? So I just, uh, I'll just warn you that I am a little bit sloppy here, all right? in the sense that I am uh, I'm not mentioning some of the effects that could be present in such an arrangement. All right? But the important, thing, the, the important things we'll discuss uh, as we move on. All right? So just remember that this is not completely accurate. You could think of it as a representative. All right? 
there are some things that I am uh, not mentioning here. Okay, but this is fine. All right, let's uh, continue with this kind of picture. Okay, this is the observed pattern when you do this. All right. So this is the pattern obtained after both phases are complete. Okay. All right. Now what we do is that instead of keeping slit 1 closed and slit 2 open and doing the experiment and then uh, so so instead of keeping one slit open at a time we keep both slits open simultaneously all right you continue the experiment with both slits open simultaneously okay and what we expect here is the expected pattern okay as usual as we saw before the electrons that pass through slit 1 will form a pattern here this is what we expect and the electrons that pass through slit 2 Will form a pattern here what we expect is that the electrons will pass this is what we expect what we expect is that the electrons pass either through s1 or through s2 this is what we expect okay that's the reason why this is the expected pattern all right fine this is exactly what we saw just before with one slit open one slit open at a time okay so remember that you are looking at the pattern after a large number of electrons have been uh, sent through the double slit arrangement okay you are not talking about one or two electrons you have sent a large number of electrons and you are just counting the number of electrons that have fallen at each point on the screen okay so we imagine that you can imagine that each electron will uh, make a spot on the screen like that Okay, each electron hitting the screen will make a spot in the sense that you see that the electrons are actually particles. You see that each electron interacts with the screen like a particle, right? When a particle hits the screen, there would be a spot where the particle hits. So when you when one electron hits, there is a spot, another electron hits, there is another spot. All right. And what we have drawn here is the the number of spots at each point. Okay, the number of spots at each point. So this is the expected pattern, just like what we would get using a machine gun, right? just like what we would get using a machine gun. This is the expected pattern, but the pattern actually obtained is not this. The pattern that's actually obtained is this. Okay? Instead of this, we get this. All right? Now, this is something completely unexpected by classical standards. If you are thinking about electrons as classical objects, we expect them to behave like the bullets okay if if the electrons behave like classical particles then we expect them to behave like bullets all right now we have reason to think of electrons as particles because when the electron hits the screen it makes a spot it makes a dot on the screen it behaves like a particle when you observe you see electron as a particle but clearly it does not behave like a classical particle so if it is a particle it behaves according to some different kind of logic Okay, so this is the observed pattern. Now, this pattern you can call an interference pattern. This pattern is called an interference pattern. Interference pattern. All right. Now, when I when we uh, say about interference, immediately waves might come to your mind, but we don't need to talk about waves. All right? There's no need actually to talk about waves. Okay. So you can think about electrons as particles in this experiment because they interact with the screen just like particles do. Okay. So I suggest that you, uh, what do you say, you don't go to the wave thing immediately. Right? So sometimes you might have heard about the wave particle duality if you have studied uh, what is a quantum mechanics earlier in your undergraduate years you might have heard about wave particle duality etc but that kind of thing is slightly problematic it has historical importance there is some truth to it but sometimes it's misleading all right so i'm not talking about any waves so if if you think about waves you have to forget about waves for a moment i'm not talking about waves i'm talking about particles called electrons which behave according to different kind of logic different kind of logic when compared to that of classical mechanics okay so for now i'm talking about electrons only as particles okay? particles that behave weirdly now we have to explain this all right now we see that there's a problem here the problem is that when i'll just compare this again 
when you carry out the experiment with one slit open at a time okay you get a pattern like this all right remember again when i say about the experiment i am talking about sending a large number of electrons to the screen okay this the source could be an electron gun okay so if you do the experiment if you carry out the experiment for some time the observed pattern with one slit with only one slit open at a time all right so at a time slit 1 is open slit 2 is closed and then slit 1 is closed and slit 2 is open and then you carry out this experiment with one slit open at a time you get this pattern but when both slits are open at the same time you get a different pattern from this you get a different pattern from this okay now this is a little bit weird all right you see that there are places on the screen where electrons reach when only one slit is open all right so for example if you look at this point okay these are the points where no electrons have reached okay and the corresponding point here the corresponding x coordinate here is somewhere here all right so when only one slit is open at a time there are electrons reaching this point there are electrons reaching this point let's call this point as x1 but when both slits are open electrons do not reach the same point so there are places on the screen where electrons reach when only one slit is open but not when both slits are open at the same time so this is problem okay this is problematic we don't expect this okay so for example how does the electron know whether uh, one slit is open or both slits are open so we expect that if electron reaches here electrons reach here when only one slit is open some electrons should reach there when both slits are open also right so if electron if some electrons reach here when only one slit is open we expect that when both slits are open also some of the electrons reach the same point x1 correct this does not happen there are places on screen where electrons reach when only one slit is open but not when both slits are open at the same time okay now this is the kind of behavior we need to describe in quantum mechanics so quantum mechanics is a mathematical framework that will try to describe this kind of behavior okay now if you want to look at the, the this again as i said this we can call as the interference pattern we get an interference pattern when both slits are open okay now this interference pattern or this this is a slightly different view of the same experiment okay and this view it's like this you see that on the screen there are dots okay so this pattern is made up of each electron hitting hitting the screen individually and this this and this plot shows the distribution of electrons electrons or photons okay you could do the experiment with photons also this gives the distribution of electrons on the screen and you see that it has peaks and valleys the peaks are places where more particles land and valleys are places where fewer or no particles land okay so when we expect this kind of a pattern what we obtain is completely different pattern okay so this picture actually shows this all right you this is a simulation of electrons hitting the screen and you see that these are dots okay each dot correspond to electrons hitting the screen so each electron hits the screen at only one place okay the electron does each electron does not go and go all over the place each electron hits the screen only at one point and this uh, interference pattern is built up over time only when you send a large number of electrons okay if you send a few electrons there's nothing unusual but when you send a large number of electrons you see a definite pattern emerging on the screen okay all right now there's the question okay how do you explain this pattern how do you explain this pattern okay so now one when i talk about interference okay when i talk about interference immediately you may think that maybe this pattern is caused by electrons interacting with each other okay we can still imagine that some electrons are passing through slit 1 some electrons are passing through slit 2 and these electrons somehow interact okay somehow interfere with each other and that's the reason why there is this kind of interference pattern okay this could be our first guess but this is uh this is not correct okay this is wrong uh, the reason is that okay you see that electrons cannot cancel each other that would be that would violate the conservation of energy etc but even if you don't believe in conservation of energy right because we are looking at completely weird behavior now uh, 
one possible let's imagine that one possible explanation is that electrons passing through both slits somehow interact with each other and cause the interference pattern right now this can be easily checked in the experiment how do we check this we send one electron at a time okay instead of sending many electrons at the same time we send only one electron at a time so you send one electron only after it has hit the screen you send the second electron so you send one electron look at it you see that it has hit the screen at one point there was one spot on the screen all right and then you send the second electron it, it will create another spot on the screen a third electron again another spot okay that's what you see in this uh, video actually each electron one by one it's hitting the screen all right and even if you send one electron at a time after a long time you will see that the interference pattern again emerges all right so the pattern is not caused by interference of different electrons the patterns is not caused by interference of different electrons okay. the pattern is made up of the pattern is made out of single electron detection detections on the screen each electron electron makes a spot on the screen the pattern made of single electrons with one slit open so i'll make the statement clearer okay pattern made of single electrons with one slit open at a time is different from the pattern made of electrons when both slits are open simultaneously this is how the electrons behave uh, in the double slit experiment now the question again is this how does the electron know whether only one slit is open or both slits are open because if one slit is open there are places where it reaches okay and so for example if only one slit is open electrons could be reaching these places okay imagine that electrons could be reaching these places when only one slit is open but when both slits are open no electrons reach here at all what's happening here how does the electron know whether only one slit is open or both slits are open okay now this you have to understand as a fundamental uh, behavior of the quantum world okay, and you will see that you can think of many different experiments and everywhere you will see that this kind of uh, thing comes all right so the question is how does the electron know whether how does the electron know whether a single slit or both slits are open how does an interference pattern form when one electron is sent through the slits at a time even if you send only one electron at a time what we expect is that the electron will pass through either slit 1 or slit 2 but then we shouldn't expect an interference pattern okay so the fact is that even if you send one electron at a time after a long time there is an interference pattern there is an interference pattern okay but what is interfering we ruled out the possibility that different electrons are interfering among themselves so this possibility is ruled out okay now the only possible answer is that each electron must be interfering with itself each electron is interfering with itself okay so how does this happen now this is the only conclusion all right each electron has to interfere with itself otherwise there cannot be an interference pattern right okay. so does the electron split into half you you can first imagine that okay maybe the electron splits into half and half of the electron goes to one slit and half of the electron goes to other slit and maybe they interact all right this is not a nice choice because again there is problem with energy conservation and more importantly electrons always appear as a single hole okay there are there is never a half electron electrons are like point particles electrons are point particles there is no such thing as a half electron it's always one full electron so this possibly possibility we can discard the only conclusion that we can come to is that each electron must pass through both slits at the same time okay every single electron it passes through both slits at the same time which means that electron can be at different places a single electron can be at different places at the same time again there's a time when the electron is both in slit 1 and slit 2 the same electron passes through both slit 1 and slit 2 and then the same electron which is in slit 1 and slit 2 at the same time it interferes with itself remember it's not two electrons it's just one electron at two places at the same time electrons uh, can be at different places at the same time okay you could also think of it with three slits and then 
in order to explain the pattern you, should, you, you would have to imagine that each electron passes through three slits at the same time okay now this thing the fact that each electron passes through both slits at the same time this proposition is formally referred to as the principle of superposition this is the principle of superposition because the electron can be at different places at the same time okay we'll um, we'll make it more rigorous as we move on okay for now we can think of the principle of superposition as the the fact that an electron can be at different places at the same time okay so the principle of superposition is this all right there are this is not just one experiment there are so many other experiments from all these experiments we come to the conclusion that the quantum state of a system is a superposition of all its possible states in this case the possible states correspond to actually electron the electron could be in the beam that passes through slit one it could be in the beam corresponding to the one that passes through slit two and if these two possibilities are there and it's also then it's also possible that the electron is in both beams at the same time the electrons can be in both beams at the same time now this is absolutely fundamental to quantum mechanics and if you ask what is the difference between quantum mechanics and classical mechanics this is the difference between quantum mechanics and classical mechanics the principle of superposition in quantum mechanics an electron could be in all the possible states at the same time it could be in all the possible states at the same time the quantum state of a system is a superposition of it uh, of all its possible states okay now all weirdness of quantum mechanics can be traced back to superposition you'll see that there are there, there are a lot of weird things happening in the quantum world and they all can be traced back to the principle of superposition okay now we can simply write this as an equation if you like okay we are just trying to represent okay all these sentences we have talked we have used a lot of sentences and all these things okay the conclusion we can write in a, we can represent it simply like this okay by this bracket this angled bracket i mean state okay all right so this means that the state of the electron is being in the beam corresponding to the one that passes through slit one and the beam corresponding to the one that in which electrons passes through slit two so i simply represent it like this the state of the electron is s1 plus s2 by this what i mean is that the electron is both in slit one and slit two at the same time okay by this equation by this plus i only mean this it's in slit one and slit two at the same time all right now this is the only way we can explain the interference pattern so in double slit experiment dse stands for double slit experiment in dse we have electrons at two places at the same time all right now this is the only this is not the only experiment that you can think of there are other experiments that show that this has to be the case for other measurable quantities like energy momentum polarization spin etc okay this means that if there are two possible energy levels in which the electron can be then being at in both these levels at the same time is also a possible state of the electron if there are this it need not be two all right it could be a large number of allowed energy levels if if an electron has a large number of allowed energy levels okay it's also possible that the single electron exists in all these energy levels at the same time if an electron can have a large number of different momenta if a large number of different momenta are allowed to the electron then electron can possess all these values of momenta simultaneously at the same time okay you can talk about spin if there are two spin two values two possible values for spin an electron uh, could have both spins at the same time etc okay later on we'll look at another experiment which uh, tells us basically the same thing so this is principle of superposition it simply is the fact that an, ele an electron can be at different places at the same time or different states at the same time okay. all right we have discussed the principle of we have discussed the principle of superposition but that's not the only thing that we need to worry about okay there's another problem called the measurement problem okay now i claim that each electron passes through both slits at the same time now you need not believe me what we can do is that we can indeed check this 
okay thus each electron pass through both slits at the same time now this question can be answered uh, experimentally right what we do is that we we put up cameras okay particle detectors so let's call them as uh, some sort of fancy video cameras behind each slit behind each slit you put video cameras okay now if if a single electron is at two places at the same time maybe we will be able to record it in our video camera and you can see that an electron is actually passing through both slits at the same time you can check this so what's our aim of this modified experiment the aim is to observe each electron actually at two places okay this is quite exciting and what's the result the result is that each electron is found either in s1 or in s2 okay so just before some time i said that the interference pattern is built up and the interference pattern can be built up only if each electron passes through both slits at the same time now we are trying to test this and we installed video cameras and when you look at the video okay so the, when we look at the video we see that each electron only passes through one slit at the same time right now what does this mean were we wrong before okay so what we said before that we, we talked about the principle of superposition etc is this absolutely wrong okay so again i have drawn the pattern here when i put up a detector here to find out right the video camera the fancy video camera and i put a detector here to find to catch uh, electrons that are at two places at the same time what i see is that the electrons are always found in either slit and then the interference pattern disappears the interference pattern disappears okay now this is quite again it makes it more weird right we said that the electron is uh, in both slits at the same time why did we say this so that we could explain the interference pattern okay now we try to actually see the electron at two places at, uh, at different places at the same time and then the interference pattern is lost okay so again the electron is behaving differently when we look at it when we try to make an observation on the electron it's behaving differently when we are not looking at it the electron passes through both slits at the same time and when we are looking at it it behaves like classical objects and it passes through only one slit at at a time okay now this is problematic right so this is called as the measurement uh, measurement problem in quantum mechanics and it still remains a problem we'll come to that so i'll summarize the second part of the experiment here okay so this is a double slit experiment without the camera and you get an interference pattern and we concluded that each electron passes through one slit at the same time and you carry out the double slit experiment with video cameras or particle detectors okay to find out whether electron is actually passing through both slits at the same time and then you see electron only in one slit at a time and the interference pattern disappears which means that you now the electron only passes through one slit at the same time the difference is that you have got a detector here right now you might ask how why but how but why all right and the answer is that we don't know we don't know why or how why do electrons behave like this why do electrons go to different go to different places at the same time we don't know all right why do they not exist at different places at the same time when you make a measurement again we don't know all right again uh, the aim of quantum mechanics is not to explain these things okay we don't have explanations for these things but we see that this is how electrons actually behave all right you look at electrons through this experiment and we see that this is how electrons actually behave what we need is a mathematical framework that describes this behavior okay we need a mathematical uh, framework that describes this behavior that describes this behavior all right so we need to put our uh, superposition principle as a mathematical statement we we saw what the principle of superposition is we need to put it as a workable mathematical statement all right and then we should do something related to measurements all right so what we saw is that the electron behaves in different ways depending on whether we are looking at it or not the electron is in s1 and s2 slit 1 and slit 2 when there is no camera right because we have an interference pattern so it should have been in slit 1 and slit 2 at the same time 
but it is in slit 1 or slit 2 when observed. When you observe, it is not in both slits at the same time, it is only in one slit. Now you can repeat the measurements, all right, and you can measure the probability. Okay, so you can repeat the experiment and you can. I said that each electron is found either in slit 1 or in slit 2. You can, uh, what do you say, make, you can actually count the number of electrons that is observed in this. We have got cameras here. Okay, two cameras. You can count the number of uh, electrons that are detected at slit 1. You can count the number of electrons that are, uh, what do you say, that are recorded in slit 2, that are found in slit 2. Okay. Now, from this number, we can put n1 divided by, we can find n1 divided by n and n2 divided by n. This would give you the measured probability. Right? This is the fraction of electrons that are found in slit 1. This is the fraction of electrons that are found in slit 2. Okay, this, give you the, this gives you the measured probability. Okay? So, repeated measurements show that probability of observing the electron in either slit is 50%. Alright, let's put it completely symmetric. Means this distance, these uh, slits are equidistant from the, the uh, electron gun, etc. So, if it's completely symmetric, this probability is 50%. The measured probability would be 50%, which means that 50% of the time, you would find the electron in slit 1 and 50% of the time you would find the electron passing through slit 2, never at both places at the same time. So this is the kind of behavior, weird behavior that we need to describe using the mathematical framework of quantum mechanics. Mathematical framework of quantum mechanics must describe the above behavior and predict the probabilities for measurements. All right. So this is, this is something that we can measure, this probability is something that we can measure. So what are the two ingredients of our uh, mathematical framework, all right? We are trying to develop, or we are pretending that, we are pretending to develop a mathematical framework. So the, it, the fundamental idea of our mathematical framework is this principle of superposition. And what's the kind of things that we predict using the theory? It's the probabilities for measurements, okay? Because this can actually be measured. How do you measure it? You make a large number of experiments, find the fraction of times the electron is found in either slit 1 or slit 2, that's all. Okay, this is something that can be measured. So, if we make a mathematical framework, we should be able to predict the probabilities, the measured probabilities. All right. So, this is our aim.